Let's close our eyes for prayer. Almighty God, we thank you tonight. We're asking, O oh Lord, that tonight once again, you will bless your people. You will shake everything shakeable out of their lives in Jesus' name. This will be a night of blessing. A night of miracle. A night of transformation. A night of salvation. Do it for us in Jesus' name. Bless your people today. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Thank you very much. God bless you. Tonight, we want to trace a journey. The journey from rags to riches. The journey from rags to riches. And what a wonderful time. A wonderful privilege for you. That no matter your condition right now, the Lord is going to stretch out his hand. He will take you on this journey. And you will come out of your rags. And you will come into the riches of the Lord. I'm talking about the journey from misery unto merriment. If you are miserable this time, at the time we finish, the Lord will stretch out His hand and He will take you out of your misery and He will bring you to miracle. We're going on a journey tonight. The journey from sin to salvation. If the power of sin has been tying you down and the cords and the ropes of sin have been tying around you, the Lord is going to take you out of the dungeon of sin and is going to bring you to the plain of salvation we're going on a journey a journey from hopelessness to happiness you know there are many people in life they feel hopeless they feel sad and they do not know how they will come out of their hopelessness and come into the happiness of the Lord. But tonight I invite you and as the Lord is holding your hand, we will go on this journey together. Out of hopelessness into the happiness of the Lord. It's a journey from unrighteousness to righteousness. Maybe you have been wondering, I want to do better. I want to live a better life. I want to have a happier relationship. A better family. But I don't know how. It's like what Saul was saying. He said to will is present with me. I want to do good. But I don't know how to do it. All of a sudden. He discovered the secret. And then he said, Oh, thanks be to the Lord. That gives us the victory and the triumph. He discovered the way. Out of unrighteousness. Into righteousness. That's why tonight. As I come to you. And then I, I don't want to leave you. In the place I met you. You want to go on this journey with the Lord. Out of unrighteousness into righteousness. Out of poverty to prosperity. You know there are people that are in poverty. They don't know how to change their condition. They don't know how to move out of, out of that poverty. Born in poverty. They live in poverty. They struggle in poverty. They labor in poverty. They sweat in poverty. They drink the water of poverty. 
and they eat the food of poverty they live in a house of poverty they belong to a society of poverty and they are saying if i can find the way and if i can trace the road out of poverty into prosperity and the problem is nobody has ever told them that secret you are looking for that secret you are dreaming about and the secret your heart is desiring that's what i bring you tonight the journey out of poverty to prosperity is a journey from captivity to conquering you see there are people that are in captivity they are bound they are tied they are afflicted they are oppressed they are in captivity they want to come out of their cage but they don't know how to come out and tonight i come to you telling you about the glorious journey out of captivity into conquering i pray that you'll partake of this is the journey from death unto life oh you say but i'm alive you don't understand there are some people wisdom is dead in them they don't have the wisdom to go out of their farming and go into feasting but today god is going to do it for you because you know the almighty god he has paved the way for you and he has paved the road for you i rejoice with you you are coming out in jesus name in luke chapter 15 i'm reading from verse 11 and he said a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father father give me the portion of goods that falleth to me and he divided unto them his living and not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living is the lord jesus christ that told us the story of the prodigal son and it's a picture of you and i a picture of every man a picture of every woman a picture of everyone that ever lived on this earth when god created us he gave us some wonderful things he gave us beauty he gave us health he gave us a brain he gave us wisdom he gave us a good voice he gave us bone and flesh he gave us a good future he gave us a good vision and we can see far ahead but then we became the prodigal son we became the prodigal daughter what was the problem of this prodigal son i want freedom i want to use my beauty the way i want i want to use my energy my physical strength the way i want i want to use my voice the way i want i want to use my brain my wisdom the way i want I want to spend my time the way I want. I don't want any restraint, any limitation, any control, any direction. That's exactly what the young man was saying. He had many, many good things. And he said, I want to have what belongs to me. And I don't want my father to control the use of what I have. Freedom. Liberty. That's what we're looking for. And we don't understand what liberty is. In this young man, 
he had the liberty to use the room the father had given him in the house. But he didn't want that kind of liberty. This place is too small. I want to go to a far country and do whatever I like. The liberty to come to the table and eat with the family. That liberty I don't want. I want to leave the family. I want to go to the far country. Eat when I want to eat. Where I want to eat. Where I want to eat. He had the liberty to mix with his the family members. The liberty of having joy with the family. I don't want that. I want to go to the far country. Go to the nightclub. And go to bed with anybody I want to go to bed with. And I want to do anything I want to do. When I want to smoke, I smoke. When I want to drink, I drink. When I want to be in the nightclub from, uh, from the night until the morning, to be there. Anything I want to buy, I buy. Once my eyes can see, and it's attractive to my heart, I get what I want. That's what he thought liberty was. But you know something? Liberty is very delicate. When you pick a stick of cigarette, before you put it in your mouth, you are in control. No, you can you can control that thing. But the moment you put it in your mouth, that thing begins to control you. When you have a glass of wine, bef before you begin to drink, you are still the master. Because you can say, I will drink, I will not drink. Once you begin to drink, you are no more the master. That drink alcohol is your master. Before you go into adultery or fornication, you are still in control. I can control my eyes. I can control my body. I am still the master. I am still the director of my life. The moment you get into fornication, you cannot control yourself anymore. That useless, illiterate, stinking girl will be a control over you. Before you begin to steal money, you have control. You are the master. And you can say, no, I will not steal. I'm in control of my mind. I'm in control of my body. I'm in control of my desires. The day you start and you pick something belonging to others and you steal, it becomes a habit. To break the habit becomes difficult. Because the habit now masters you, conquers you. But you see, people don't understand. I am looking for liberty. That's what this young man was saying. Give me what belongs to me. That's what you are saying. God, give me what belongs to me. And he gave you eyes. All right, God, hands off. I will you hands up, remove your hand. I'm going to use my eyes the way I want. You give me legs. That, now remove your hand. I'm going to use my leg the way I want. You have given me a voice. That's enough. Hands up, remove your hand. I'm going to use my voice the way I want. There's my beauty. You look at yourself in the mirror in the morning. And then you look at your face. I am beautiful. I am handsome. And then I'm going to use my beauty the way I want. God, you have given me the beauty. You have done your part. Remove your hand. Don't control my life. I will use my beauty the way I want. That's the problem of this young man. 
That's your problem. I have money. Now God don't tell me how to spend my money. I am going to have the liberty to spend the money the way I want. Don't you know? Anything we spend without control. It will finish one day. The body that we are using. Without any control. It will become weak one day. The beauty we are throwing everywhere. You throw your beauty to the politician. You throw your beauty to the lecturer. You throw your beauty to the to the workers. You throw the beauty out for money. And the beauty we are throwing out, you give it to this, you give it to this, you give it to that. One day, the beauty will go. The pleasure that we say we're going to, I'm going to have pleasure. And you know, if you understand what pleasure is all about. It's like when you begin to take something. The first time it is sweet. And you say there is nothing like this. This is wonderful. I am going to keep on enjoying this thing. When you take that thing the second time. The thing is not as pleasurable as before. By the time you take it five times, ten times, a hundred times. It is, it is ordinary. It's like when we were very young. Uh, whenever there was, uh, you know, Christmas.